Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and a big shout out to the person that suggested this. We're going to be reacting to This Was Your Prophet emotional speech Mohammed Hoblos. A big shout out to the person that suggested this and thank you very much for watching, liking, subscribing and everything else. This video is going to be in two parts, no, three parts because it's very very long and yeah. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Really? Really? Is this the state we've reached? The greatest father, the greatest leader, the greatest warrior. The greatest commander, the greatest in every aspect of life, Wallahi, is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Quran, Ya Allah, Quran. In kuntum tuhibbun Allah, if you claim, if you reckon, if you think that you love Allah, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni, then follow Muhammad. Follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today we don't follow, we question everything. Grab your son and your daughter and your wife. Sit, Ya Allah, for your sake, for the sake of Allah. Open the book. Learn his name, his wife, his daughters, his sons. Where did he go? Where? Learn, teach it to your children. Bring it to life. Your son looks like Justin Bieber. He doesn't look like Muhammad. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات ربي وسلام عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل في القرآن الكريم بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون We praise him, the king, the master, the sustainer, the creator of the seven heavens and the earth and we send peace and blessings upon his beloved Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Allah عز وجل warns me and warns you my brothers and sisters do not die except in the state of Islam, in the state of submission, to have fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. My brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Malik, He chooses, He has a way, He has a system. And sometimes His choice, His selection may make sense, sometimes it doesn't make sense to you and I, but that's irrelevant. He is the king, he is the master, he is the one with the ultimate wisdom and knowledge and he knows. He chooses what he likes, when he, when he likes, where he likes. Allah Azza wa Jal from the millions and billions and billions of stars and planets and Allahu A'lam what's out there, he chose earth. From the billions and billions and billions of angels that he created, he subhanahu wa ta'ala, he chose Jibreel to be the greatest of them all. And it has nothing to do with physical size, for there are many angels that are bigger than him. From all of his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he chose the creation of the human to be the greatest. He selected that there is to be time. The year is to be made of months. And from the months, he chose Ramadan to be the greatest of them all. Months are to be made of weeks, and weeks are to be made of days. And he says of the days, the day of the Jum'ah is the greatest day of them all. From the billions and billions of human beings that have come and gone, he subhanahu wa ta'ala, he chose 124 or 125,000 to be the greatest of them all, being the prophets and the messengers. From the 125,000, he subhanahu wa ta'ala chose five and said, these are the five of power and strength. He chose Isa, Musa, Nuh, Ibrahim, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from the five, he chose one. Never mind him 
saying that you are the greatest prophet and Nabi. He says, you are the greatest creation of mine. Khayra khaldillah, he chose Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Such a Nabi. In Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal, he addresses his prophets and he gives salams to his prophets. He says, salamun ala Ibrahim, salamun ala Nuh. But when he spoke to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala al-Nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. He says in the authentic hadith sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Whoever makes salah on me once, Allah azza wa jalla makes salah on you ten times. Sallu ala al-Habib. What a prophet. Give me your hearts, please, and give me your imagination. Friday khutbah has become the sleeping session. We come, we find the corner that we're cozy with. We fall asleep, wake me up for the prayer. Now give me your heart and your imagination. Sahaba, your fathers, they described Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They said he had a round face sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like the moon. He had a large forehead. He had large eyes, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that were jet black. He had high cheekbones, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his color, subhanallah, everything about Rasulullah was the middle way. Everything was middle. Sahaba said he was neither tall, neither short. He was of medium height, inclining towards height. It wasn't difficult to look at him. His hair, which was jet black, was neither curly, neither straight. It was wavy. And he grew his hair, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, between his ears and his shoulders. And sometimes for the ibadat, hajj and umrah, he would shave the bald completely. But generally, he had long hair. He had long eyelashes. He had arched eyebrows with a gap in the middle. He had bright, bright white teeth. The Sahaba described it like hailstones. He had a slight gap between every tooth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had a big beard, contrary to what many people think. No, he had a big beard in the authentic narration. Sahaba said, in fact, it was that big, we could see him when he would read Salah, when he would stand for Salah, we could see his beard hitting his chest as he would recite Quran. He had a black beard with some gray hairs in it. They said he had a strong silvery, silvery complexion, silvery neck. Sahaba said he had broad shoulders, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Very physically strong. Sahaba said he had some light hair on his chest. Sahaba would describe he had a flat stomach, not like me, a flat stomach. Even in old age, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his stomach never went beyond his chest. And really, why would it? Aisha is describing to her nephew Urwa. She says, Wallahi, we used to watch the full moon. She says, we used to observe the full moon, then the full moon, then the full moon. Two complete months would pass us by. And not a single flame, no cooking, no boiling of any sort. She says, not a single flame would be lit in any of the nine houses of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa for two months straight. So Urwa asked, oh my auntie, how did you people survive? She says, al-aswadan, al-tamr wal ma We lived off dates and water for two months straight. 
So no wonder he didn't have a big stomach. His wife described that he had some hair, what we call the snail trail. You know, he had some hair coming down his stomach. If he spoke, you heard him. He never spoke too much, he never spoke too little. If he spoke to you, you understood completely. He never said he would glance. Sahaba described he was always smiling, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Contrary to what Muslims do today, we're always frowning for some reason. No, 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 he smiled. If, you shook, if he shook your hand, he wouldn't remove his hand until you removed it first. If you called him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would never turn his head. He would turn his whole body and address you with his shoulders. Sahaba asked Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, your mother. They said, O mother of the believers, tell us. What was the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So she said in return, Taqra'oon al-Qur'an, do you people read Qur'an? They said yes. She said he is a walking manifestation of the Qur'an. Sahaba described him in his akhlaq, in his... Very interesting video. I like how he said the greatest creation by God is human beings and then he moves on to talk about um, the description of prophet muhammad i really love how he's highly admired and appreciated by people because he's being portrayed as this person that was living just just like any common man this is a person that was um that made everyone comfortable that paid attention to each and every one he wasn't biased he wasn't favoring anyone he just wasn't feeling like he's better than anyone else and in the end putting himself up there he was too humble despite the situation despite whatever situation and everything else let's get to the second part of this 